Goodbye, my dear. Poem English. When there comes a parting of ways, which in life inevitably must, one must be willing to say these dreadful words. Goodbye. May God be with you. Or perhaps may you be with God. May you desire, seek and get peace, wisdom and love. May you live a life truthful worthy, desirable and as you envisioned it. May no ill befall you, no sadness touch you. May you be what you wish to be. We have chosen different paths. And here we must separate. God gave me you and now I give you back to him. Go in peace. I recall long back I had once said time shall part us. Time shall part us and though I know you too will not forget me, I shall remember you more often. The time has come and I take your leave and leave you this meager token of my love. It may be tiresome, but read on. This is a labor of love, my dear. You may not value it quite as much as I do, but keep this close to your heart. One day, in the twilight of your life, you may want to read this and know that you matter, that you're worthy enough to be a poet's inspiration, that there was a man once in your life who loved you true. Rarely do two people come together who are so right for each other. I know you are for me. Whether I am, it was always for you to say. Today, we must say goodbye and leave and go on on our respective paths. Will they cross again? And will I still find in you that same tenderness, the same care I find in you today? Will the time allow you to keep your goodness, your beauty and your lovingness? Or will it fill you with that same callous hardness, that inhuman indifference, the petty narrowness that I see in those who call themselves men of the world. I love you and I have told you that often enough. 
but somehow you do not seem to believe it. Just as I cannot that you do not. In fact, I'm surprised at us. How much I have tried to woo you, to win you, but you have steadfastly rejected all my insinuations, all my advances and entreaties, and I equally steadfastly have kept on trying and blissfully neither of us ever reducing the care that we felt for the other. It was your decision to not be as close to me as I wanted you to be. I have never tried, I believe, to force or manipulate you into accepting me fully. And this is not because I had not the means to try or the hopes to succeed, but because I respected your decision and believed and still believe that to reach me the last few steps towards me you must walk alone. I guess I alone can know how difficult it was for me to accept that you will always like me but never love me. Just this other day I saw you in my dream. I tried to embrace you. You pushed me back brutally and said, Will you never give up? Damn you, I hate you for this. And when I sat down alone and dejected, you came up to me, embraced me and said, almost coldly, you know, I do this only because I like you, because I only like you. I woke up with my pillow wet. It is not that we have never been close. There have been times when I have known an intimacy, a peace with you, otherwise unavailable to me. I remember the day when I wrote a poem, a few questions. I asked you, will you share with me my dreams, my visions and my illusions? my successes and my failures. Will you care to be with me in my good and ill luck? In health and infirmity, in youth and old age. Will you like to believe in me and maybe win your bet or perhaps lose Will you accept the gift of my love and of my life? You wrote back, yes to all, but the last, to which you replied, okay. Then I held your hand, kissed it and gave you mine. You looked furtively at your sleeping brother and with a smile 
sealed what I called the contract of togetherness. Such were the times when I built a world around you. Such were the times when I melodramatically said to myself, I will wait, wait for the day when you shall find that your destiny lies with me. When you shall find that the person who loved you the most was I. When you shall find that in the final analysis you wish to be mine. My words were clothed in a lover's conceit. My hopes were futile, my dreams vain. But I had to hope and dream, for I did not, and do not, wish to live beyond the day I ceased dreaming. I know the rainbow is an illusion, and few people perhaps know the reality better. But how can I help it if with the rainbow goes my reason to live? I am divided, a man of reason and a romantic. I have tried to bring the two eyes together. But like the East and West, they are always together, yet always separate. In you, I have heard my echo. We are two of a kind, dear. No matter how far you go from me you shall always find me near like me you shall be tender and callous in turns like me you shall be reasonable and soon irrational like me you shall never know whether love is for life or life for love. Like me, you shall be the toughest on those who love you the most. And those who you love the most. Like me, you shall run after the most ephemeral of satisfactions and allow the most durable to escape. Like me, when demanded of, you shall not give a dime of love. Unasked, you would give your life. And like me, you shall get annoyed when somebody claimed that you were like him despite the fact that you were. Between you and me, dear, we could have rewritten the history of the world of romance. Perhaps we will yet. Perhaps for just these reasons I have waited for you and continue to wait. Although I know you love somebody else, I also know that you perhaps always will, but I hope for the day when you shall find that in the final analysis 
you wish to be mine. And I hope that you would have the opportunity and the courage that day to come to me and that I would still be there for you. Such was the world I built around you. All my waking hours, seven days a week. But come the night, every night, only the ruins remained. I do not say that for you it was any easier. Often my love has embarrassed you. Often you have tried to escape it. And always you have failed. I apologize for putting you through all that. It is not that I did not try otherwise. I often resolved to close down this one-way street. Often I told myself that I will pull away from you, that I will see you only as a friend. I could not do it. I tried to convert my Eros into Agape. I thought I could kill my expectations of you and go on loving you. Remember the day when you came to my room and you saw written on the stark unadorned wall of my room if you do not love me I can accept that but please allow me to love you I need to be loved but more than that I need to love You smiled and for the first time admired my poetry. For some reason, I know not what, I had not the grace to acknowledge your praise. I muttered something under my breath and you thought that you had said something inappropriate. You were not inappropriate, my dear. It was I who was. I could not accept that you had failed to see. The lines were addressed to you. I could not accept that you had appreciated me as an artist. and not as a lover. That was all I desired out of you. Inappropriately desired. For a desire is appropriate only when the desirer has means to gratify it. I had not. No matter how much I tried, this flame which was lit in my heart was never fully extinguished. And I, at the end of the day, was always left with a long dark night and a cold lonely bed. 
You will not know, but I often tried and convinced myself that you do not love me and can never do so. Yet every time I forgot the lesson so painfully learned just a little earlier and found myself believing that someday, someday you shall find dot dot dot. To escape the tyranny of my insatiable desire for you, I tried the ancient road of Socrates, Sur and Sarmad. I tried to pursue the truth. I tried to follow God. I failed there too. I do love God, but I cannot touch him, hug him or caress him. And I cannot sit back and look into his eyes. I want him in a human form, the form that can tell me how much he loves me, how much he misses me when I am not with him, who can quarrel with me and lovingly make up soon after. Who can kiss me good night and hug me good morning? Who can believe in me? Who can take my successes, failures, and concerns as his own? I thought I had found in you just such a man. In you, I thought I had seen the man who could read my poems and cry. But life saw fit otherwise. I do not have you. Either you do not love me or you cannot allow yourself that. Both ways, you have the liberty to reject my love. I shall try to accept that and I will try to not love you anymore. Any more than you can accept. Having finally come to accept that, I tried to keep my emotions undisplayed away from you. There I succeeded. All I wanted to say to you, I said to my pen. All the love that I had for you I put in my poems. My poems were and are for you. I hope someday you can also tell the world that. Do you remember the day when you sat with me in my car and you picked up the poetry journal which I had forgotten to hide before your arrival. I hastily took it away from you and gave you some crap about how that was crap. Nothing important. No dear, I was telling a lie. It was important, very important. It contained two 
of my poems. Two, which were the product of my deepest anguish. Never in my life could I part with them, disown them or ridicule them. Never could I call them crap, except when I was with you. I did that because I did not want you to see them. You see, I can share my knowledge with you. I can share my love with you, my happiness with you, but never my pain. And not just because my pain is mine alone, and I do not like sharing it, but also because my greatest pain as also my greatest happiness comes from you. I did not want you to know that then. And do you remember the times when I used to ask you for a kiss more readily than when one asks a friend for a rupee's change? But then I realized that kiss is a commodity worthless unless given unasked. You could not have missed that I have not asked you for such an expression of love since a long time now. It is not that I need it any lesser. It is just that I have understood that when it comes unasked, it is a whole lot better. And so I waited. Waited in vain. But now I am at peace. And the demon of unrequited love no more pains me as exquisitely as it once did. Finally, before I close, let me ask you if you are thinking whether I love you really as much as I say I do. My answer is quite simple. If I did not, I would not go on loving you despite knowing that it is not I for whom you spend your sleepless nights, that those are not my thoughts which you weave your dreams with, that it is not I for whom your passion ebbs and flows, that it is not I whom you loved and lived for. And just in case, if you have any doubts left, do remember that often when you needed to be with your girlfriend and could not be without my assistance, I provided it ungrudgingly without once letting you suspect how painful it was for me to help you get closer to my more successful rival. And when I say more successful, I obviously mean romantically. For sexually, it was I who was 
the only successful one. I have never had physical love as good as I did with you. And knowing your reactions, I can say that the statement probably holds true for you equally well, if not more. Though, of course, we see it differently. I prefer to see the act as making love and you probably as having sex. Coming back to my assistance that I gave you to reach her, I do not say this to make you feel guilty. Else, I would have said all this earlier or to congratulate myself. This is simply to say, I love you still. And now, I ask only one thing of you. In life, you shall get many chances. Many ideas will cross your mind. Many people your life. Of those, you will bet on some and pass some. If ever you feel and I ask only this of you that if ever you feel that you could have placed your bet on me that you could or can love me as I loved you that you could ever want me in the capacity in which I offered myself to you that if ever you find that you want a true sick hearted slave or even someone to walk just a few steps of life with that you need a hand to give you strength, a heart to make you want to live over again or merely a shoulder to cry on. Just call. I shall be with you.